you for doing this, man, because this is something, you know, it's a difficult conversation. But I tell people the more difficult conversation is when when you're sick and you're about to go home and you got to tell your family, I ain't got nothing. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I'm 67. I'm 75 years old. I worked 60 years. And I'm leaving y'all nothing. Still yeah. working before I left here. My wife had a one of her coworkers, uh, 51 years old, had a heart attack. Two Tuesday or Wednesday, on the job yeah. site. Just they were trying to do compressions and then gone. Like my wife has lost two people, three, four people in the last. 30 days. So, of course, she was like, I need more life insurance. I need to get my will done. You know, and that's the thing. I'm like, it takes these trigger events for people to say, let me go get this done. The problem is a lot of times you don't know when these events are going to happen to you. Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you have we have to go on. We have to be proactive. You know, we've got to we got to get life insurance. We need to get adequate life insurance. And I'll tell everybody 20 times your income, whatever it is. Start there, 20 times your income, and then work backwards. But don't do no less than 12 times your income. Uh, get the estate planning done. Either use Legal Shield and pay like 30 bucks a month, or uh, get you an estate attorney that's going to charge you about 2,500 bucks. Doesn't matter. I can help you with both. Um, I can refer you to people on Legal Shield. I can refer you to attorneys. Doesn't matter. Um, but make that investment because that's where the financial foundation starts with every family and the problem is most people think that a couple hundred thousand is enough for your family to get by but think about it it's just enough to get by why would we want to allow them to just get by that's what we've been doing for 200 years getting yeah. by we can't getting keep by. getting by it doesn't work yeah that's so true um yeah yeah that's that's unfortunate man um but i'm glad that you're doing what you're doing because we we need to hear more of that and um just be better stewards of you know of of our finances and that's and that's and that's the bad thing about it. i'm guilty too of it because uh, we are very um complacent um probably uh, not really proactive in terms of those things that you mentioned you know it's it's always when some emergency comes up that's when you kind of be a you know over you know try to take care of things there but right now while we have the time we should be you know looking at our life like you said it's a self-assessment financial assessment i look at where you know how much insurance we have um you know how 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 are we going to survive once we retire when that day comes and, and and how do we you know take care of you know our our grandkids you know or our, our children right so who it's it's it's, it's, it's so heavy good. Yeah, it's a, it's a heavy conversation and it's sobering only only for the first couple times when you're hearing about it. Wealthy people, this is a normal conversation. That's how they that's how they maintain their wealth. They talk about how to avoid paying taxes, how to reduce paying taxes, how to pay lower interest rates, how to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. So it's a sobering conversation for people that haven't been exposed to it before. You know, but I, I we just went and looked at an office space today and I was I was telling my business partner, you know, we were looking at how much it, you know, what was the cost. I said, let's stop talking about about what it's gonna cost. And let's talk about how many people we can bring through here for a workshop. How many people can we bring through here and have a will workshop? How many people can we bring through here and talk about us have an estate planning uh, attorney here? How many people can we talk to about increasing cash flow, whether it's network marketing or whatever else that they like or Uber Lyft, whatever. How can imagine the cost for us to have this space is small compared to the information that we can provide for people and a large number of people. And that's our job. Our task is simply to get the information in front of people. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this Thrive Financial South, Intelligent Financial Solutions. So that's what we want to do. We want to get people in front of solutions. Now, just like we hear, you can lead a horse to water, can't make them drink. I'm going to nudge them when I'm going to put my hand on the back of their head when they buy that water. I'm like, you need to drink this right here. <laughs> and, you know, I got you here, but I need you to drink this water. <laughs> because what happens is, you know, I, I, I've got people that may get a life insurance policy. And my only death claim to this day, I've been in the business for seven years, is my is only I've only had one. And it was my best friend. My best friend, 
Oh, no. 20 years was my only death claim. And he told me no. He was single, no kids, not married. He told me no for two and a half years. I wrote his policy in a bar because I watched some tip of waitress 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. I was like, dude, that was $80. I'm going to write you a policy for less than $80. He was like, man, well, I, will you stop talking about it if I do it? No, but we won't talk about this no more. Wrote a policy for $78. He had the policy for 14 months. That's a little bit over $1,000. His brother, his beneficiary, got a check for $150,000 tax free. Dude, wow. you're paying less than you're paying less than 20 bucks a week. Something happened, and you left your family an immediate estate, $150,000. He was able to put money away for his college, for his son's college. He threw his son a huge birthday party, bought his fiance a huge diamond ring. He put money down on a house. Like, and he, this guy got to do, he got to benefit from all of that and then put $1 into that policy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I, I, and that's the only example I have personally with the death claim. But you know, that, that's what we need people to hear. We need to understand that this, uh, some of this is not as, you're not going to have anything to do with you, which is why, you know, I have my T-shirt says Proverbs 13, 22, a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. We're talking about a wise man leaving something for his grandchildren. That's multi-generational. Mm -hmm. He may be here to see his kids grow up, but what are we doing for the grandkids? You know, that we may only see here for the, you know, the first 15, 20 years of our life. What are we going to, what are we, what kind of position are we putting them in? Because the compound enters over that 30, 40, 50 years. The setup to grandkids is really when you begin to see the well. Yeah. That's true. really where you begin to see the well. Yeah, that's so it's so good. It's amazing. So as we get ready to close, I um, wanted to mention, talk a little bit about purpose. Um, and I can see <laughs> purpose flowing all out of you about, <laughs> you know, helping people to, you know, better manage their money um, and to plan for the future. So what, what, would I be right in saying that that's kind of where you feel that God has placed you to, to what you're doing right now as far as helping people financially? Ab oh. Absolutely, without a doubt. This is undeniably what I've been called to do. Like I, I tell people, this is kingdom business and I'm in the, the finance ministry. That's what this is. And I've done a lot of things. But at 50, I've never actually, since I got my license, um, I've never been more sure of anything that I've done besides my love for God outside of this. Yeah, and that's fascinating to me because, I mean, you know, from your background, you said you were a dancer and photographer and all these other things that you've done. And then, you know, this, in these latter years, you've kind of realized. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. It was it's like Matthew being a tax collector. Oh, he'll be a good one. They like the tax collector? No. Simon's a liar. <laughs> Him? He was like, yo, you, you right there, you. I'm like, what? You mean life insurance? That ain't sexy. <laughs> why would I want to why would I want to do that, Todd? God, you don't want me to do that. And then he was just like, then I got in and I was like, oh. I was like, the precious, the precious. And now I talk about it so much. But it's because I, 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 I love the way it makes me feel. First of all, it makes me feel smart. All right, it makes me feel smart. Um, <laughs> but because of my background, you know, it's like, how do you go, how do you go from dancing, promoting parties and clubs, all yeah. that stuff tied to, yeah, talk to people about life in church. They're going to love it. Me? No. Like, people was hanging out with me at the clubs at after-hours parties. That ain't the... You want me to talk to Cornell about my money? <laughs> I was just with him at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning a couple of years ago. That ain't the guy I want running my money. Okay? And he's like, no, that one. That one. I think of, and, I, and I think about Paul. Yeah. You know? It was like, yeah, the one that persecuted the Christians. That's the one. And they're like, no, that, that's absolutely not. Can you see the disciples right now? No, God, you're wrong here. Jesus, that is not the one. <laughs> that is not the one. He's like, no, trust me, trust me. No, no, no. But that is that when you when you when you find your gift and you know that you're walking in your purpose, there's nothing like it.
Yeah, that is so I true. Feel like it brings me like regards of like I said in the beginning, regards of everything going on in my life. And you know, you, you know, our conversation at first, I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm going through this and you know, moving out, and and then at the end of the conversation, we're like, yeah, <laughs> and our community is gonna rise up, and we're gonna be off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> it gets me excited. And let me tell you, Todd, have you ever been have you ever been to the National Museum for uh, Inequality and Justice in Alabama? Oh yeah, I just went um about two months ago for the first time. That place has floored me, man. I went there about two months ago, so we probably bumped into each other. Um yeah. that that woke that woke that had me uh on, on a whole nother level coming mm -hmm. back. Because when I think about the opportunity opportunity that we have now that our community didn't have 200 years ago, didn't have 100 years ago, shoot, Dr. King, yo, we just got, we were just allowed to vote in the 60s. Mm -hmm. That's 60 years ago. Like, I'm 50 years old. And I'm like, dude, now you have an opportunity to do crypto, Forex, real estate. You don't have to turn in a resume and they get to look at you and say, oh, no, no, you're not, you're not. You're not working here. Like this is the best time in history for people to educate themselves and then take advantage of opportunities. You're so right. To, to really, to really put their family on a different level. Like as a community, like right now, nobody should have excuses. You don't even got to be that smart because you don't have to be smart to go on YouTube and watch how to do forex trading or how to do crypto or how to write a book. Or do TikTok videos. Like you, my son, check this out. So I I never played video games. But I remember growing up, people talking about kids playing video games all the time on the TV, right? Mm -hmm. All the time on the TV. Oh, you, he's a grown man playing on the video games. Grown man playing on the video games. People don't know, like, right now, like, my son is in his other room watching some kids play a video game that he doesn't play. And those kids are making millions of dollars a year. Like Ryan's World. Anybody's got a kid under 10 knows Ryan's World. So he was the first one that broke out of um, companies sending them toys that he could open up and people would watch him open up these toys and he would react that. to it. Ryan, Ryan did over $30 million last year. He's not even 10 years old. He wow. did over. He did over thirty million from. He's the, like in the top five YouTubers. He's not even ten, but his parents. So you imagine they got millions of viewers. His parents, his mom got pregnant and had twin girls. So guess what they did? They just ran the same system for through videos them. Yeah. through them. Now they watch the toys and they're girls. So you got to imagine. So now you're talking about their family from YouTube videos could be worth a billion dollars by the time that kid's 15 years old. A billion! Not a million, not 10 million, not 20 million, a billion dollars. And now you got kids on there. Think about think about kids that are singing, that are discovered. Like my friend, my friend Scott, um, Scott discovered um, Justin Bieber, right? Mm -hmm. So so he, he finds Justin on YouTube. Scott right now is worth over $400 million. 15 years ago, Scott was throwing parties at one of the clubs I did parties at. 15 years later, from a guy he found on YouTube, he's worth $400 million. He's worth $400 million. That's crazy. This is the greatest time in history. You can get paid off of TikTok. You can get paid off of Facebook. You can, you can develop a skill. You can be a coach. Like People have to understand, find your gift. You ain't got to be an actor or an actress now. You just got to find your gift. Market mm -hmm. your gift, and then when you get the money, be good stewards of that money, and pass it to your kids. Yeah, I, this is absolutely the best time in history for us to be able be able to as a community to be able to make up for everything that we didn't get the forty acres and the mule, the reparations. Everybody, go to YouTube, create a channel, do something. Go buy real estate, go do something. Get your kids, take two pictures of your kids, and put them on Facebook or something. Yeah. It's do something that generates passive income. Have fun with it. Do it and then get your get your financial house in order. Amen to that. Amen. Amen Let's get that. it. <laughs> All right. Part two is starting right now. Yeah, Those of you that are just joining us, we're just getting started. <laughs> 
Uh, we could go on forever, man. We, we may have to do a part two. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate this. I told this this stuff here gets me fired up. I, I see, man. It's awesome, man. We got to talk offline a little bit about you know some of the things that you do, uh, services wise. So, but anyway, absolutely, <laughs> man. But thank you so much, man, for uh, you know sharing. I mean, it's wow, it's a wealth of so much good information, and so I'm, I'm appreciative, and I know those who are watching are appreciative too, man. Some good stuff and. Um, and folks, you know, like I said before, um, if you like what I'm doing, you like what God Dream is doing, if you know of anybody that's, you know, doing some great things in the in the ministry or in, in the kingdom, yes. you know, let, let me know. I like to, to share their story because I know we all have skills, different skills, and we can all learn from each other. Absolutely. God has endowed us with so many different skills and he's blessed us in so many different ways. And it's not like I always say before, it's not for us. It's for us to bless others, right? Yeah, we can get the benefit, but the benefit, the big benefit is being a blessing to others. Absolutely. So Cornell, man, thanks again, man. Um, um God bless you and everything that you're doing, man. And I look forward to uh, you know, talking some more offline. And uh um, like I said, it's, let's uh I'm I'm, I'm I'm glad that we had a chance to meet. And I hope this will be a, a beginning of a, a growing and wonderful relationship. Absolutely. Shout out to Tony Bars. Oh, yeah, Tony, yeah, Tony Shout is one to of the Tony. Tony. Yeah, big time Tony. Yeah, man, I appreciate it, man. Anything you need, man, just just give me a call. Hit me up. Okay, sounds good. Well, folks, y'all take care, and until next time, God bless. Peace out. God bless everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks.